What is going on, everybody? Jumbo Thick here, back with more D and D Five E. This is our um, tabletop kind of RPG game that we're running right now. This is Whispers of the Stars. Uh, this is um, our D and D Five E campaign, and I, am, of course, will be your GM, your DM for the night, Mister Jumbo Thick. And I am joined by uh, the new cast and crew <laughs> of, the, of the channel. Since uh, Mr. Galactic will not be joining us for a while, he might pipe in um, every once in a while as uh, a, a brief character. And if he ever gets time, um, if, his, if his schedule ever frees up, we will bring him back in full. But for now, this is what we have. So um, let's br briefly introduce ourselves, um, just who we are, who we might be playing tonight, and then we will get into the actual story, and um, we will just put where to get in, uh, feet running. So we're going to start to my left, if I'm looking at the screen, which will be uh, Mr. Doobie, 209. If you care to introduce yourself, sir. Hello, everybody. My name is Alan, uh, also Doobie 209 for those of you from the Warhammer mm -hmm. stream. And I am playing uh, Dayu in this campaign, is a male hobgoblin, a uh, monk. Uh, do you want to do descriptions right now? Uh, well, we'll do a full description in game. So that, that just okay. a brief little little insert's good. Yeah. Male, male hobgoblin monk. And that will bring us down to Mr. Dan, Big Dan. Hello, and uh, my name is Dan Decker. This evening, uh, I will be playing uh, uh, Zalkar Krugen, and uh, hopefully I will be playing him uh, next evening as well. Uh, we'll see how <laughs> this goes. Um, uh, of course, Hobgoblin Male, he's, uh, he's kind of a monk, not a monk, he's playing a paladin, but um, with very monastic, uh, let's say monastic uh, background going mm -hmm. on. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I'm interested to get into this and, see see how we do everybody can call me zal zal okay we'll zal. Zal. keep it and easy that will bring us over to jeff you care to hello yourself, yes i'm jeff tucker and i'll be playing uh tuk tuk the taker it's pronounced tuk 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 uh, the taker tuk tuk yeah tuk -tuk. love it he is swiping, uh, swiping. <laughs> He's a, uh, a goblin rogue and uh, male, and obviously, and because um, I said he, and yeah, I I'm excited. This is my first campaign with you guys, uh, with you as DMing uh, mm -hmm. Jumbo Thick, so I'm excited to be here, man. Yeah, and Jeff has played with us a couple other campaigns, but yeah, first time he's joining us on the, uh, the so far, uh, at aforementioned hardcore game, I believe, as a few, few people have called it, but we'll see. Yes. Um, that brings us over to the one and only... Jumbo Smooth. Hello, everyone. I am Jumbo Smooth. Uh, Matt, I'll be playing the role of Rogar Whitescale Son of Amu this evening. He is a dragonborn barbarian. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, excited about the game. Awesome. And speaking of the game, let's just let's get into it. Now, we, we did have our session zero already. So if you haven't seen that, pause this check out the session zero now some things might be coming up and some things did change since then um i have refined the madness table but um before we actually start the story we're going to have to do again what we did in the previous session so i need everybody to roll me four d6 damn it drop the lowest d6 and then add them together um if you roll below eight you have to you roll them all again. You guys aren't going to believe. I what rolled a six and three fives. Okay, so drop a five, so that brings you. you <laughs> let have me 16. get that. Uh, let me get that. Yeah, sixteen. You. So nice. ma make a note. You have a sixteen sanity score, Mr. Now, is that good or bad? Is it that That's, higher or good. lower? Better. It's good. It's it's it scales okay. just like our ability scores, normal ability. Awesome. Scores. Oh, give me one moment there, GM. You need that. Uh, let's see. Clear. Get three D6. Four D6. Four D6. Drop the smallest. Dropping the lowest. I got a... I'm bad at math. 13. Thir 13? All right. 13 sanity for Dayu. Uh, 14 Six. for Amu. 14 for Amu. 
All right. 16 for the good Zal. Whew, nice. man. High rolls, guys. High rolls. Okay. 16 for Zal. Everybody's pretty well sane. Dayu's a little bit on lower end, but even then, a plus one is still good. It's very good. So the, the scores will work just like any other ability score. I know you weren't with us last time, Jeff, but um, if I ever have to ask for a sanity check, or uh, I'll say sanity save, none of you are proficient in it yet. Um, we'll talk about uh, how that happens probably off screen, just so we don't eat up too much time. But um, you will have to roll that, and then there are consequences for failing. <laughs> so yes. Um, with that being said, let's get in to the session. So, welcome to Emberfell. A world ravaged by madness and despair. Once in the past, a great fracture shattered reality as unfathomable entities and their spawn wreaked havoc across the world and consuming not only this realm, but all realms, bringing the decadent civilizations of the past to ruin. The gods and many other powerful entities banded together, cultivating servants of what mortals remained and attempted to push the maddening trespassers back to whence they came. However, the war was hard won and in an act of defiance, the last of the gods were sacrificed to hold back the horror, using their divine essence to create barriers to hold these entities at bay. Great gates were constructed and their secrets entrusted to those that remained. In the wake of this destruction upon Emberfell, life continued with the heroes of the Great Fracture sculpting new civilizations. Some built upon the bones of old and some entirely new and unique. These few bastions of civilization have all found their own way to cope with a world long past its sanity, where tears in reality still allow creatures of unspeakable horrors to slip into their plane and abominations, demons, and monsters have laid claim to much of the world. Madness sweeps through communities and its harbingers yet linger, ever attempting to breach the seals and unleash the old ones back into this world. And our story will begin in the year 985 AF after the fracture on the 26th of Mital within the Alabaster Dynasty, one of the very few civilized kingdoms on the continent of Drillora. We are going to open up with a certain monastic paladin, I believe he described himself as. Yes. As Zalt, Zaltkar. Is it Zaltkar or just... Um, Zalt, yeah, Zaltkar, but you can Zaltkar. call him Zal. Mm -hmm. Zaltkar. So Zaltkar, um, you have been tasked with a, an investigation from the Sisters of Silence, which is the, um, the official title of the followers of Olysia. So that is the organization you are part of. Um, what does uh, Zalt look like? Zoltar, Zaltkar. I'll get it right. Zaltkar. Zaltkar is, um, he's a hobgoblin male aged 21 uh, with long black hair tied back, uh, kind of a pale olive green skin, um, emerald green eyes, just under six feet at five foot, 10 inches tall, about 175. So um, medium-ish build, well built for his frame. Um, kind of, a, you know, not very strong. He's uh, very dexterous, um, quite charming. Okay, all right. And Zaltkar, um, let's see here. You are currently uh, tasked with an interesting mission. This is actually your first mission given to you by your master. Oh, lovely. And she has tasked you with finding a few missing hounds of the sisters that have decided to not show, to not meet their current destinations. They were set up to meet with their master. Um, 
near a a landmark um, in the cliffs, close to the uh, the city of. I have the map here. I had the map here. It's gone now. <laughs> close to the city of Conwich. So you are in the vicinity of where you were instructed to look. The neighboring countryside is mostly hills. There are lots of fields in the area. There is quite a bit of farming that is done here, though not as much as there, e as there is near the, uh, the uh, Koru River um, in Kota. Mm -hmm. But still, quite a bit uh, here, close to the Devatonic, and of course the uh, the biting waves, um, the nearby ocean. You are currently moving along the actual road, and you have been told as that there is a marker, there is a broken wagon that you are quickly approaching, and you are to take a path, a small game trail off of this wagon that should lead you into the hills to where they were supposed to have met with their conspirators or whoever they are currently investigating. You've been more than likely purposely given, given limited knowledge as to what has happened. Um, we'll determine why that has happened soon. But regardless, that is your, uh, your, current, uh, your current destination and it is getting late in the day. It is um, sometime in the afternoon. The three suns that Emberfell uh, rotates around are descending through the sky, and the ring of rocks, the belt that circles the uh, the world, is beginning to illuminate again and begins to shed a almost bluish light across the uh, the night sky. And there are no clouds currently. This is a very clear sky this night, and you can see rather well. All right. Um, would, uh, would, would I know, would I have been told, am I, can, are we concerned because they haven't completed their mission out of malice, or have they been intercepted, or is that what I'm here to determine? You are here to determine what happened, and you are here to okay. do to also, um, you know, the creed of your order, and mm -hmm. you've been entrusted to handle the situation in whichever whichever way it need be handled. Okay. So I'm kind of, I'm on the way to uh, where it is I need to be going. To the last known location of these, uh, these, these other hounds. Have I gotten there yet? Am I, am I able to investigate around? Sure. Um, first off, give me a survival check. Okie doke. Oh, so I need to see how your stuff goes right. along. Um, I will mention that, uh, cause I forgot to tell you this, um, the, the player that is, I added an item in your equipment that you currently okay. have equipped. You have a mask. Um, you feel right. free to describe it. It has a description in there. And yeah. you are currently in possession of this mask as a hound. Mask of the Infiltrator. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so it says the mask of the Infiltrator is a black and white uh, porcelain mask resembling a female face, but smooth with no apparent eyes or mouth. The symbol of the Silent Sisters of Elysia is embossed across the forehead. Uh, when attuned to this item, the wearer places the mask upon their face. They may cast the disguise self spell at will and have advantage on all persuasion and deception checks. So very handy. Yes. Glad I didn't take the feat that gave me a uh, disguised self. <laughs> <laughs> so I have that on and I did a 16 yes. on my survival check. 16 survival checks. So you are managed as you are moving down this path. You do see that there are um, fresh tracks uh, leading nearby. Now you know that these individuals, these hounds, uh, disappeared weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, there are fresh tracks leading off into the distance, and they look like several pairs of feet. Well, that is um, that is definitely a clue. So I will stealthily uh, okay. follow these follow these tracks as the sun set down. Uh, I'll 
slide into the shadows to try and, and you know, I don't want to, I don't want to draw attention to myself. Okay, go ahead and roll me a stealth roll. All right, so let's let's make that. Oh, not too bad. Fourteen. The sun's still 14. up. Fourteen. not bad. All right, you travel for an hour or so, still tracking relatively well. Um, this is what you've been trained to do. You've been trained to to hunt down and deliver those to justice who you need. As you move forward, you eventually come to another hill, another rise in one of these many hills in this landscape. You come over the top and there are tons of flowers and other blossoming things around you, mostly in a, uh, a field. They're very sparse vegetation. The few trees that you do see are the equivalent of a um, like a cherry blossom, although the blossoms are blue, mm. uh, mostly due to the interesting light in this area. You take stock, um, hiding mostly behind one of the few trees on this hilltop. And as you look down, you can see in a hill just around the corner, you see two individuals. They look to be goblins um, in what appears to be some kind of leather armor. They look very official. And they're just kind of standing near a cliff face in the nearby hill. Uh, they are uh, a few hundred feet away from you. Okay. Um, what do they appear to be doing? Can I get a good scope on them? They, from what you can tell with your passive perception, yeah. um, you can tell that they are, they look like they're just kind of, um, kind of looking around, laying back against the, uh, the, the kind of cliff wall that they're next to. They're standing so, there. a couple hundred feet off I am a few hundred feet yes yeah uh, I would I'd get as close as I could just to kind of just listen in okay with do, your do previous stealth check, check in there yeah go ahead and yeah. give me a perception check as you get closer right. uh, not too bad uh 17 17 as you get closer you hear um, the goblins kind of uh Loudly talking to each other. Ah, this is a shit detail. Oh, quiet, you. You didn't have to clean. You didn't have to clean what they did in there last time. I was stuck in there. I gladly take this detail. Ah. All no right. And then they just they go on for for a little bit longer, but um, that's what you get. I, that's what you hear, at least. All right. So. <laughs> Uh, I think I need to get some information. All right. <clears throat> See if I can't find out what these folks are talking about. Um, so, <laughs> um, I want to get how how close how close am I now? I, I will say, with you being able to hear that well, mm -hmm. um, you probably snuck up to about I'll give you sixty seventy feet. Okay. If you move any closer and you're trying to remain hidden, we'll have to make another stealth check. Okay. I want to get to about 40 feet if I can. Okay. Um, so let me give you another stealth check. Yeah, here. give me one more stealth check. And I'm going to roll a perception for them, an active perception. All right. So that is a 14 on my stealth again. Okay. All right. I'll let you know what happens. Okay. Uh... As I sneak up there and I get close enough, I'm going to draw on one of them. Oh, really? Um, yeah. I'm gonna, my, my intention is to drop one of them and interrogate the other. Okay. You are, so you get to within, you said 40 feet? Yeah. All right. Um, let me pull up some stats real quick. This is taking a uh, turn for the worst. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, I've got my stats ready. Um, <laughs> so you you get to within about forty feet, and you jump from the bush, and both of them are like, ah, 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 and you can see that they have they have little spears in their hands, um, 
and they also have a, a, a small crossbow attached to their backs. Yeah. Um, being this close, you could identify them. You know what? <laughs> yeah. You could identify them as soldiers of some kind. All right. They're definitely soldiers. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I uh, I need to uh, I need to at least get some information out of one of them. Um, I tell you what, rather than rather than go full bore, um, you revealed yourself. It's too late for that. No, I know. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do it. Okay, so no, I'm going to drop. I'm going to shoot one of them with the crossbow. Okay, give me an attack. Go roll. ahead and shoot the uh, shoot one roll. of them with the crossbow. Oh, that's gonna six does not hit a bit. It does as not a hit poor, you. As a poor... you draw your your very small hand crossbow that's kind of attached yeah. to your hip, and you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will say you do have advantage because you were in stealth. So you, right. so roll one. Try that again. We'll, okay. we'll we'll see. Yeah, it might actually hit. I didn't. I, I forgot about that myself. That's a sixteen. Uh, a sixteen does hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Okay. All right. Oh, nice seven damage. Seven damage. Yeah. Um, you take one of these goblins in the throat as it, yeah. <laughs> and he just kind of goes limp. The the other one, oh shit, oh shit, and he he starts moving towards the which now you see that you're closer. There's actually a door recessed uh-huh. behind them, and he's moving into towards the door. All right, um, and so uh, I haven't used any of my movement. I'm going to dash after him and grab him. Okay, you dash up to him. Um, now you're going to roll me initiative and we'll see who wins okay. in this initiative we'll order. <laughs> All right, here we go. I got a, uh, 13 on my initiative. Okay. Um, you move up, you move quick despite, um, all of the armor that you're wearing. And are you just, did you just kind of drop the hand crossbow or do you have it kind of looped somewhere? Yeah, I just like looped out. I would have let okay. it loop back down on my belt. Um, yeah. Ready for the draw. Ready uh, for the draw. So if I and, and as soon as I get a hold of him, uh, yeah. however that's going to go, I'm going to well, intimidate the shit out of him. As soon as you get to him, yeah, he turns around, ah, ah, and the he pushes into the door. Um, he uses his action to disengage from you, and oh, he damn. runs inside. Um, shit. the inside of the structure is um it looks like a long tunnel it looks to be at least at least probably from what you can see at least 50 60 70 feet in um it looks like it opens up into a room there is a pair of torches burning halfway down the tunnel and there appears to be some kind of gate at the end of the tunnel that this go- this goblin is just running towards as fast as he can he gets 30 feet in and he still has another 30 feet to go. Um, okay. You do see on the other side of the bars that um, the, the gate is closed and it, le- it looks like there is some kind of locking me- mechanism on the gate itself. Um, it is now your turn. So this guy is taking a huff. And he's screaming the whole time. Ah, oh, shit. Um, what's in the opposite direction of the way he's running? Uh, so it, this is just a tunnel into the mountain itself. Oh, like so into he's the like, hill. Boop, boop, okay. He's moving into um, a tunnel. He's running straight. Let me see if I can drop drop him from behind. I okay. Hate to do that. I was give wanting me, to get some information, but giving the tackle left me no choice. It's left me no choice. Uh, that's going to be a seventeen to hit. That hits. Roll me damage. Uh good. Maybe I didn't kill him. Uh, it's uh, three. three. Three damage. damage. You take him in the shoulder. <laughs> And he, oh, oh, I didn't get paid enough for this. Um, on his turn, <laughs> he's going to run up towards the gate, and he takes, um, he so he reaches down for something. Oh shit! Oh, ah, help me! And he starts. He's, he's racking on the gate is uh, as loud as he possibly can, and you're hearing footsteps um, and shouts from deeper inside this structure. Right. Um, what's your passive perception? Uh, it's a 14. 14. Okay. Um, Mr. Zopkar, mm. as you, as you um, 
uh, loose your second bolt, which, by the way, you would have had to have reloaded. It doesn't matter. Um, regardless. That's true. Regardless, it doesn't matter. Um, as you loose the second bolt, you kind of drop it to your hip, and you begin like you're going to begin moving towards him. And you you hear a <laughs> behind you. Before you turn around, smack right across the top of the head, and you go out cold. You drop uh, past zero hit points. Um, you take uh, fifteen points of damage. Okay. So you immediately go unconscious. Lovely. Um, I'm going to be taken somewhere. This is awesome. <laughs> you, yes, yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. The part of Pierce Galactic will be played by David <laughs> So, the car. You go blimp. And go ahead and give me a perception check. Oh, okay. Oh, how do I feel like Abraham in The Walking Dead right now? Oh, I mean, it ain't too bad. It's a 22. 22. Yeah. Um, you hear the shifting of metal. You hear a gate opening and closing. And you're kind of in and out. Um, with a 22, I'm going to say that you're, you're um, a little more conscious than you're letting on. And you are being drugged um, by two large bugbears. Um, mm -hmm. They also appear to be in some kind of leather armor that you would recognize as soldiers of some kind. Um, with that role, you see that on your left, as you're being moved into the structure, you see what appears to be a, a large door with a small kind of um, like not, not a portcullis, but a small viewing window that is barred. Um, and you do see there is something shining and glittering from within. It is illuminated brightly. Most of this hall is not illuminated. Um, additionally, on your left, you pass another door that's open, and you see bunks within this room. It's obviously some kind of barracks, because there are soldiers in there. Um, some of them have kind of began to walk back, and it looks like they're playing cards. Mostly a collection of goblins and bugbears. Then you pass by a closed door on your left, preceded by a closed door on your right, then another closed door on your left. <laughs> you come to the end of the hall, and, the, and I will say that the structure itself, the inside of the structure, while dimly lit, you do hear the dripping of water in the distance, and you can tell that there is moss growing on some of the um, rough, roughly worked um, stone inside of this uh, inside of these halls they are about um, 10 feet tall the ceilings are in this hallway and the hallway itself is also about 10 feet wide so not close quarters but pr pretty tight and it looks like possibly with that with that role that this may or may have once been a more well-kept structure at some point but um, obviously it has fallen into disrepair. You, you can judge by the amount of some of the elements that appear to have been encroaching into this area that um, it is not seen as much use. You get to the end of the hall and you are carried into a final room and that is when you completely, you just lose it. You're out completely. Ah, dang, okay. And as you're dragged in, we are going to move over to uh, to someone else. <laughs> As that happens, Dayu. Um, I, Mr. Dayu, uh, I would like you to remove every uh, piece of equipment from your inventory. Okay. Uh, with the exception of one tiny object that you would like to keep. Um, don't, when I say remove it, I mean unequip it. Don't like delete it all. Oh, damn it. <laughs> oh, whoops. It, was only, it was only arrows. Okay, it's fine. You're fine. <laughs> You're fine. So unequip all inventory. You don't have access to any of it. Okay. All right. Um, you can have smuggled one tiny object inside of your prison wallet. Okay. 
I will allow that. <laughs> you know, what do I want it to be? <laughs> um, Dayu. Um, you have been in, you, you awaken in this cell. You are in a cell. You, I don't know, have you ever been in a cell before, Dayu? Um, I'll say Nelby is very familiar with them. Okay. Well, this cell appears to be about 15 feet by 15 feet. Um, mm -hmm. There is a, the equivalent of like a straw bed. It looks really bad. There's blood kind of tattered in it as well, old and dry. The floors are rough, and that is literally all that's in this room, and it's on the floor. Not uncommon. Many of the people of the dynasty do sleep on the floor. Um, this is a very almost uh, Japanese kind of Asian themed mm -hmm. kind, of, uh, kind of country. But um, it is very dark. There are two torches outside of your cell that are illuminating the edges of the uh, of the wall. The entire room looks to be about about fifty feet uh, wide and about um, about forty feet, uh, 40, 45 feet um, in length. And you see as a man is dragged into the cell next to you uh, by two um, bugbears. You are currently only in a loincloth. You have no other clothes oh. on. Right. So your uh, markings may be exposed. So uh, what, what do we see whenever we uh, glimpse uh, Dayu inside of his cell? Um, you will see a hobgoblin red skin uh, keeps his hair pulled back to a bun, uh, man bun style. Um, some gray in it. He also has a chin beard similar to uh, Abraham Lincoln, kind of, with some gray oh, in that yeah. as well. Mm, like he's, uh, he's 40, so he's a little older. Um, yellow eyes, and since he is in a loincloth, he has a tattoo of a three-tailed fox. Mm. Uh, does it matter where it is? Oh uh, no, you, you pick wherever you want. It does cover a the equivalent of half a limb, so it okay. can be anywhere in your body. But it, it, that's how much space it covers up. So then he would have it from his like elbow up to his shoulder. Elbow up. Okay, right, left. Uh, we'll do left. Left, left arm, elbow up to the shoulder. Okay. All right. And uh, Dayu, as you come to wakefulness, you see as this man is stripped of everything on him. So go ahead and remove all of your stuff, Zelskar. Um, as everything is removed from you, besides you can, I will let you have sm have previously smuggled one tiny object inside of your prison wallet in preparation of what has happened to you. I carried this watch. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you can keep one tiny object, but the rest of it is, is taken. Uh, um, and you are <laughs> my mask. You, you're, the mask has been taken. You are dumped unceremoniously into this cell, uh, uncon unconscious. Cloth? You are. You do. A, you you do. I'm assuming everyone wears a loincloth underneath <laughs> their belongings. I mean, maybe some of you don't. Do you want to be naked? Going commando. Can. Going that's very fine. Going well. commando. If you want to be naked, that's fine. <laughs> I do not want to be naked. Okay, then yes, you are wearing a loincloth as you are dumped. Um, into this, into this, uh, the cell, unconscious, mind you. Like in the eleventh grade. Yes, indeed. So, die you. What would you like to do? <clears throat> Dumped in the one next to me. And are these the cell next to you? Can you explain that comment about the eleventh grade real quick before we move no. on? No, we're not <laughs> explaining that. We're going over that. We're in character, damn it. <laughs> um, are they bars? There are bars, and there are bars between the cells, so you can you can see into the into the next cell. Um, I will speak in a uh, goblin to the bugbears. Okay. And oh, by and by the way, goblin is the essentially the common language of the dynasty. Oh, okay. Um, so. Common is another thing that exists, but if you were talking to another person, you would assume was of the dynasty. You would be speaking in goblin. Basically, so. we're always speaking goblin unless essentially unless you say otherwise unless you unless you say otherwise. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming these bugbears are bigger than me. I'm very average, 5'11", 165. Uh, yes, so most of the, these two bugbears, one of them appears to be almost seven feet tall. Um, the other one is like a, a good 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, um, okay. And they're typical of their kind. They're very beefy, um, big guys. Uh, you haven't been here long, 
you, as, as far as you know, as far as you know, you, you just woke up. Here. Um, oh. Now, what you do remember, Dayu, is you would remember that you were making a trip to sell... Do you, what, what exactly do you farm, Dayu? Uh, probably grain. Okay, yeah, some some kind of grain. Wheat. Well, we'll go wheat. with wheat. Yeah, wheat. Um, beer is a thing here, so beer, mead, all that good stuff. Um, they they love their alcohol in the in the dynasty. So, um, you were on a you were moving to sell your your grain um, in the nearby area. Uh, I'm assuming you probably from where we discussed you possibly living. You probably were going to Port Dorona to to sell your wares. Um, it's the closest, biggest city to you. And after you left your farm, you were held up by what you thought were bandits. Um, you were smacked over the top of the head, and this is where you woke up. Oh, I've been accosted. <clears throat> All right. So speaking to the bugbears, what did this one do? Hey, look. Little one's awake. Yeah, he's the he's the one that don't smack down on the top of the head. <laughs> Glare at him as I sit, very uh, meditation style. Hmm. Are you gonna? You, are you are you looking to intimidate these bugbears? No. Okay. Just just staring at him uh, blankly. Yeah. When are you let me out of here? A, one of them has a big bundle of all of uh, Zaltar's his, his things. Here all of his shit is in like a big bundle and he's kind of got it over his shoulder like Santa Claus and he's beginning to move out of the room the other one kind of looks back at you 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 better watch what you're looking at boy I come in there and teach you a lesson and he's much that. he's obviously much younger than you yeah you know the youngsters think they're better than me uh, but they left the room um, if you don't say anything he'll kind of huh, no. spits onto the floor and then moves it begins to move and then you hear the door <sighs> close I look it, is over a the... it's, it is a heavy door and it does have similar to what I described to Zaltkar earlier there's a small window um, with bars on it a viewing window I look over at uh, this other person is he breathing can I tell he's breathing he's unconscious but he's breathing I look him over, try to look over his things from just sitting in the middle of the cell. Okay, go ahead and give me a perception check. Ooh, not good, it's a six. Six, it's a six. So, uh, with a six, you're kind of looking him over. He's alive, it looks like he got beat down pretty hard, actually. It looks like, in fact, you see that there's a pretty bad wound across the back of his head, but other than that, it looks like they may have kicked the shit out of him for a while as he was laying there. Uh, he's, he looks like he's in rough shape. I've been physically abused in my unconsciousness. You have. You have. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, he's, he's not looking in the best shape. Um, with a six, you don't see much else. You do hear a rustling, yeah. though, uh, Dayu. She kind of looked to your right, and there's a much larger cell much larger cell and you hear a creature groaning Rogar mm. son of Anu um, describe what Dai Dayu sees as Rogar um, comes to wakefulness as he is manacled to a wall in the middle of this cell um, Rogar is a uh, dragonborn um he is a descendant of a white dragon, so he has white scales, um, uh, almost with a little silver sheen to him. His eyes are, are very kind of like almost bright blue. Um, uh, his jawline is uh, very pronounced, you know, as most dragonborns are. Um, he's a large uh, fella. He is uh, about seven five, I believe. We decided yes, on. you decided to make him huge. Thank yes, you for I did. that. You're welcome. Uh, I think we decided <laughs> about you know three hundred, 
Big guy. Yep, 300 pounds. Oh, he's big. Um, yeah. Um, he's got like he's a, Shaq. Basically. He's, he's, big. Uh, he's, he's a big guy. <laughs> he's got like um, some sort of like tribal markings across his body as well. Um, look to be painted on in kind of a ashy color um, across his, his arms and his back and his chest. Um, he has like a few uh, trophies of like animals around his neck, um, like a necklace of teeth of some sort. Um, uh, normally he wears um, leather furs and such, um, but I'm assuming right now he's fully naked in this. In this uh, uh, does he uh, does he have a loincloth or does he? He usually wears a loincloth right He'll, now. We'll say he's got a loincloth. I mean, unless you want to be naked. That's I'm saying right now he's naked. He's okay. fully. Fully naked. naked. Um, Fully you naked. see a, a a rather large creature. Um, you've more than likely you've seen Dragonborn before. The nearby kingdom um, is actually full of them. Uh, there's been many wars with the Draconia Kingdom. Now it would be highly unusual to ever see a white Dragonborn. Uh, most of the natives of Draconia are silver and blue for the most part. There's a couple others sprinkled in there, but white is by far a, uh, a rarity. You might even assume he's some kind of freak, some kind of mutation. Um, but yes, you, you see Rogar. And Rogar, you do come to, uh, to wakefulness. Um, probably one of the last things you would remember is um, traveling uh, into the, the dynasty, hunting someone or something, whatever it was. And at some point, you remember almost succumbing to the elements as it was a long, arduous journey full of treachery and death. And as you crumpled to the ground somewhere, you remember hearing footsteps walk up to you. And then that's all you remember. Now you've awakened in a cell. You've never been in a cell. You've probably never seen a cell before like this um, due to where you're currently from. So this would all be very foreign to you. Um, would I be like starving? Uh, Exhausted anyway? Or? You would be the equivalent of, you would be hungry, but a more mechanically speaking, mm -hmm. you don't have any exhaustion or anything like that. Okay. Um, probably first thing he would do if he finds out he's, you know, he's, you know, looking around his surroundings. Yes, um, and you are chained to a wall. If he's chained, are my legs chained or my Your legs my... are not chained, just your wrists. You're just manacled wrists. to the wall behind you. Um, am I, is there, is there any slack on them? Oh yeah, is it... yeah, there's some slack. You got, okay. you, you have about, a, you have about a foot. Okay. Yeah, but it's keeping you kind of in a, in a, like if you were to dangle, it's still keeping you kind of from, from like sitting down. Okay. Okay, I see what you're saying. So, um, first thing he, I, I, Rogar would try to do, would, he'd probably be a little bit scared of, you know, he's never been in an incident situation mm -hmm. where he's been, and so he'd probably just kind of get, oh, oh, and just try to like flex against the, the chains. Flex and bust out of there? And try to bust out. I mean, he, he wouldn't know what's going on. He's being, give me, give me yeah. a, uh, give me a strength check. Okay. Strength check or athletics? We'll do strength. Okay. Oof, not very good. Seven. You the first the first pull you, <clears throat> and you just you're you're there. You're just kind of <clears throat> you might maybe you've weakened. Maybe the the time that how much do you have no idea how much time has passed. Sounds about right. <laughs> um, some something's happened, and you just you just don't feel you don't feel like you're you're at your full pinnacle. I asked a question. You said I just arrived at, as, in the dynasty. In as the far dynasty. as you know, yes. Now I will say. Um, you would the, you would know the common language. Okay. We'll have picked that up because broken. there is, okay. yeah, you'd probably know the equivalent of broken common, but enough to get your point across. So you don't have to, we don't have to do the whole okay. broken speech thing unless you want to. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, um, Rogar would probably, you know, he's trying to get out probably if he can. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he's just, he's going to be struggling against that chain as long as he can. And he'll probably yeah. just, um, let me out! Son of Amu demands it! And then it pulls out, you know, just like, yep. uh, 
um, yanks against the chain as hard as he can, you know. You begin to um, yank, and they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're, they draw taut every time. You're, uh, yeah. For now. Just, yeah, that's all he's doing. It's always he's going to be causing a ruckus. Okay. <laughs> um, as that happens, um, you see all of this die. You mm-hmm. um, there is a shifting in the cell across the way. So there is actually a bit of a gap between your cells. There's three cells on one side of the wall, and then there's two cells on the next side of the wall. Um, you guys can all look at the map I sent you at this point, and you guys are in the cell block, by the way. <laughs> um, so to give you a better visual of what's of what the, the terrain is kind of looking like for right now. So um, the two cells by themselves across from you. You see some shifting in the cell immediately across, and you see that there is a smaller form, kind of, uh, you need to tell that one to be quiet. He's got to get us all killed. Who knows what they've been doing to us? Why don't you tell him? It doesn't seem like you listen to me. You're closer. That will make you think he'll listen to me. Well, you're closer. Hey, be quiet over there. He's not listening. He would. I would just still be. Rogar would still be struggling. Mm-hmm. Um, but once someone said something to him, he might. Might just. Be, Where are we? You see the little a little head kind of poke into the bars. Um, it is a goblin, um, very small kind of squat goblin. He's missing a piece of his ear, his left ear, and he looks. He looks middle aged, though it's hard to. I mean, do any of you really care about goblins? Probably not. Um, regardless, though, he's uh, he's got a, a bit of a, a crooked tooth, and his tongue kind of lolls out of his mouth as he speaks. Um, he's also just in a loincloth, very spindly kind of body. But um, he has a, a strange air of authority about him as he's kind of gripping the uh, the, the bars. <laughs> you found yourself prisoner just like the rest of us there. Uh, what are you, some kind of lizard thing? Never seen one like you. I am no lizard. <laughs> Could have fooled me. And he kind of uh, looks around, sees... Um, sees Dayu across there. Well, how'd you get here? I woke up here. Hi. Are you? Did you get a good bump on the noggin or something? Is that all you got? I woke up here. That's the last thing I remember was a bump on the noggin. Well, hopefully you can do better than that. You get us out of this. Get me out of this cage. This is a place you don't want to be. (sighs) You're just like the rest of us now, Hob. Just like the rest of us. At this point, I'd probably try to uh, finagle with my my shackles. Okay. You are not shackled. Oh. In that case, I will stand up mm-hmm. in all my glory of my... Uh, you are? My diapery loincloth. Yes. <laughs> Butt cheeks hanging out. Yes. Yes, indeed. Uh, I'll walk over and test the, uh, the door of the gate. It is very much locked. Look around. Uh, anything to pick it with? Um, as you go to glance around the room, um, there is a shuffling in the cell next to the goblin, and we see another squat form, kind of uh, uh, holding his head as Tuck Tuck. <laughs> tuck Tuck. You, my good friend. Uh. Yes. You have come to wakefulness. What am I doing? (laughs) You're in a cell. You have nothing on you. Um, What do we see, first off? Well, um, so you see a goblin with um, uh, kind of a, a pale green skin, one green eye, one blue. 
Mm. Um, he's got a couple of uh, gold loops piercing one of his two large ears. Mm-hmm. Um, and he is, uh, uh, he has a tattoo on his chest of, uh, a snake, uh, that, uh, for, you know, the people on earth would, uh, recognize as a, uh, Mozambique spitting cobra. So, uh, and it's okay. kind of wrapped around an arm with the fist, uh, mm-hmm. on, that's on, that's on his chest. Love it. He is, um, he's naked as well. And you're surprised, uh, you know, below the waist. Oh, you no. Know, it's, oh, no. It's unproportional. It's unproportionally un- large. Exactly. <laughs> and the one thing that he brought in the, uh, <laughs> they brought in the place yeah, with him, that he snuck in in his, in his prison wallet, was actually a pipe. A pipe. And so he's just he naked pulls it with out. a pipe hanging out of his mouth, you know? Puts a pipe in. Dusts <laughs> off something before he kind of rubs it off as best he can yeah. on his body. Puts Gross. <laughs> This is, this is how it's made. Gentlemen, what are we doing here? He squeezed oh. through these bars. Didn't see you there. Nice to see a fellow goblin. Sure. Sure. That's that's the best we get for our kind, huh? Sure. Well, I, I might be a little above you. My name is Tuk Tuk. Oh, really? And, um... He looks very taken aback at that statement. Um, do I see Dayu messing with the uh, the lock? You probably see him beginning to mess with the lock. Um, go ahead and Dayu, do you have anything to pick the lock with? No. You don't. Um, Dayu would also have nothing up his prison wallet because he, he wasn't He was He wasn't this. expecting this. <laughs> okay. Um, <sighs> My fists. Go ahead and give me a uh, an investigation check. As a three. Three. You begin to look around your cell. You don't see anything that could help you out. And so you are just jangling a, a door that you cannot open. Um, Correct. Can, can I see Tuk Tuk, like, pretty well? Um, He's, yeah, yes. Because there's actually, the torch is closer to him. And so you mm-hmm. can actually see him relatively well. I recognize that tattoo. If I can I, see it. If, now, Tuk Tuk, where's your tattoo at? It's on my chest. It's on your chest, that's right. Oh, so yes, you would be able to see it then if he's facing Front and center. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You there, as I looked at Tuk Tuk. You got a way out of here? Can I see his tattoo? Uh, yes, I would say. It's on his arm, right? Uh, uh, yeah, I'll say, you all, all of you have dark vision. Mm-hmm. Even with the light in here, this is the equivalent of like a dimly lit room, so you guys would be able to... To, to, to see each other in all their glory literally more so, than you wanted to gentlemen what is your, what is your name my name is how about you get us the hell out of here well I'll do my best and uh, I'll, um, I'll first I'll try using the end of my pipe and see if I can do anything with a lock if that doesn't work I'll use one of my earrings to see if okay. I can try to pick the lock. You being a, more of a, we're not going to say shifty, but more of a... Um, He's a shifty person. A more, a more uh, legally not as inclined as the rest. Um, you know, one that does not let doors stand in its way very often. You could probably assume that the pipe is not going to work. Um, you go ahead and take one of your earrings off that they did not confiscate. And you go ahead to try to insert it in the lock. This will will not be um, picking tools since you didn't bring your uh, your your lock picking tools with you. Um, that would have been the one smart thing to bring. It would have been the smart thing to bring. They are considered tiny. Just throwing it out okay. there. Um, but <laughs> you you have your <laughs> earring, so you can make me uh, a Dex sleight of hand check. Uh, let's say sleight of hand. Yes. 14. 14. You begin to... You're kind of working it, and you're working it for a while. Um, A few (laughs) minutes pass. Everybody's looking at you. The goblin next to you um, looks over. Kids these days. And he just kind of shakes his head at you as you're working it, and you you feel like you almost got it, but you're just not quite there. 
Um, if you work at it long enough, you might be able to, to, to click something in place as you're doing so. Um, right. As this happens, um, you will have noticed that the, the goblin in the cell next to you kind of looks over. Well, wow. And he kind of, he now fully appraising you, seeing the tattoo and everything. Ha, huh, so you're one of those traitors. What? What do you mean a traitor? You want to join your own kind. Join the resistance. And he slaps his chest. I join whatever suits me. You'd rather be some hobgoblin's bitch. Please, sir. Is he in the cell with me? No, he's in the next cell over. I'll talk to you afterwards. Oh, oh you'll talk to me, all right. You're damn right I will. You're damn right you will. <laughs> and he, um... At this point, um, go ahead and give me a, um, a history check. Tuck, tuck. Actually, Dayu, you can as well. Uh, I rolled a seven. Okay. Ooh, she is rolling like shit today. Well, I got an 18. 18. So, Dayu, as he kind of slaps his chest and kind of moves over, you see an interesting scar across his back. And you recall um, one of the times you went to town. You recall a bit of information. And you recall that there was an infamous leader of the Goblin Rebellion by the name of Slit Craventum that was supposedly killed and executed on the field of battle which ended the, the latest rebellion near the city of the uh, the port city of uh, Dorona. Noted. The tattoo looks eerily similar to the one described. Noted. Those two are still arguing it out, though. They're arguing right now. Yes. Mm. Um, now you could also see that there is. You guys have rolled so shit on your perception. <laughs> um, Dayu, you will have noticed that there is actually another body in the corner behind you. Oh. Um, it looks like a a, a goblin, mm. um, unconscious, kind of kind of under the under the kind of straw mat a little bit. Um, Tuk Tuk, there's there is a goblin in your cell as well, and there are um, two more goblins. Um, also, apparently, they appear to be unconscious within the the cell that has uh, the uh, the supposed rebellion leader in as well. The goblin in my cell is he unconscious too? Yes. Unconscious. From what you can, can I look tell. around to see? If it, can I see if there's anything else that would help me with this block? Um, go ahead and give me an investigation check. Thirteen. Thirteen. Begin to you know, look around as you're kind of you're still fiddling with the damn block. You're you're desperate to open this damn thing and kill that that bastard goblin next to you. As you're kind of fiddling with it. And, you're looking around, you don't see much of anything. You do notice the kind of unconscious woman behind you, female goblin, um, from what you can tell. Also in the equivalent of like skivvies, you know? One cloth with like a like a wrapping, chest wrapping. Um That's all you see. You don't see anything that you think might be able to help you out right now. Gentle lady. Wake up. Unconscious. Help me. Ah. Go over into her and try to pat her face. Pat her face? Nothing. She's breathing, but unconscious. Now, with your investigation check you just made, I'll give you this. Tuck, tuck. As you kind of slap her face, you see that there's a mark on her neck. It looks circular, and it looks like there's... Hey. It looks like there's points all around it. Piercings. Oh. Into the skin. Do I have one? Not that you can tell. (laughs) 
What is wrong with this girl's neck? Um, <laughs> at this point, uh, Zoltkar. Is Rogar still, Rogar still thrashing around? Oh, yes. I'm sure Rogar's still this entire time. He's just trying to, argh, trying to hold <laughs> out of here. Uh, Zoltkar, um, yeah. you will rouse yeah. from regfulness. Um, you will have uh, one hit point. Yay. And you have one point of exhaustion because you hit zero. Yeah, I did. Yes. Uh, uh, you did kill a guard on the way in, so you were mistreated badly. Uh, um, uh. And you've now found yourself prisoner. And as you kind of, uh, and you begin to sit up, um, what do you do? Uh, first of all, I kind of, I need to get a look around uh, my bearings. And so, um, and I guess I gather that I am obviously in a cell. Am I restrained or shackled? You, oh, you were not restrained. You were just dumped yeah. in here. I'm just um, kicked and dumped. And, yes. Go ahead and give me a uh, perception check, though. I don't care if I lived or died. Definitely not. All right. That's what I get for shooting a goblin in the throat. Oh, that is a natural 20 a plus, um, you said perception? Yes. Four. So a natural 20 plus four. Plus four. Yeah. I woke up. Yeah, you wake <laughs> up and you're kind of, your, your training takes over. Um, yeah. You're used to being nimble on at the ready for treachery at all turns. Um, as you kind of rouse yourself and look around quickly, you take in the room, you take in the cells, the five cells, you take in all of the individuals we've met thus far. Um, you also see Zaltkar with a natural 20. You see that there are markings in the cell that you're in on the the wall itself. Looks like they could, they've been etched in with an mm. instrument of some kind. And you recognize the symbol of uh, Elysium, the symbol mm. of the Silent Sisters, has been carved into the cell. Yeah. Oh. I think to myself, hmm, this, uh, this doesn't bode well. And uh, which can I? Which of the cells would I be in? You, five? you, my good friend, are in the far northeastern corner. Okay, so top right corner. Yes. All right, so I can see all the other four. You can cells. see everyone. Now, Rogar is against the wall on the opposite side, far side okay. from you. Okay. Um, at the, on the, uh, the, that would be the northwest corner. Yep. And he is, he's still thrashing around and he's so damn big, you'd be able to see him. But he would be the one least likely for you to uh, have direct line of sight on. Gotcha. <sighs> so, a uh, quick scope around the room, having with that, with that really good, uh, oh, would yes. you want me to get an investigation or um, um, to... anything in the anything that I can try and okay you know, make my way out of here. I'll, with. I'll give you this because you got a natural twenty. I'll also give you this. Um, the marking on the wall um, it has a double meaning, and it means that um, obviously someone was here, someone from the Silent Sisters. No one else would mm -hmm. carve something like this into the cell wall. Um, it also means that something is something is here. Something is hidden. You begin to look around and you find a loose piece of, of ground, a loose rock, and you pry it open. It's about the size of your hand. Mm -hmm. You pry it up and there's a hollow underneath. And underneath there is the equivalent of a shiv mm. that has been stashed underneath this rock. And I will palm this shiv. Kind of palm it. Do you place the rock back? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You place the rock back. Uh, and then I'll um, I'll hobble. Uh, I'll just kind of you know hobble over to the the cell door and, and remain to appear meek and weak as possible. Okay. I want to draw attention to myself. That's fine. Um, but I'm prepared to protect myself now. Um, Rogar. One weapon they can't take from me. That is that is true. There is one weapon they can't take from you. Um, Rogar. Uh, go ahead and give me another strength check. Alright, let's see. I 
that's a little better. Uh, that's a uh, 19. A 19. That's mm. way even more than a little better. That's like really <laughs> good. <laughs> With a 19, you uh, and you snap um, one of your hands free. Rip it, rip it free from the wall. The shackle is still attached. There's still a chain, but it's been ripped free of the wall, and the chain is just broken loose. Okay. Can I take take my other hand and grab the chain with both hands and yank? Okay. You to free myself. You reach over to grab your other hand. Um, as you do, the door opens. Oh. <sighs> opens, and there's bugbears walking in. Oi! the hell are you doing? As they point, they, one of them points like a big morning star in your direction. Why am I here? And then this... Oh. Uh, Shit. Trying, he's getting loose. Trying to pull, and, I'm trying to break free. Yeah, and they go in, he, he's like, Stas, Stas, go get the others, go get the others, quick. And they drop um, a hobgoblin that's also, um, it's a hobgoblin female in a one cloth and a, and a wrapping just on the floor unceremoniously on the floor in the middle of the cell she's unconscious um the uh the one bugbear with the morning star is kind of like pacing as the doors open and he kind of walks a little bit closer to your cell now you stop that right now go ahead and give me a strength check with advantage now since you have both hands rogar okay okay Uh, 15. 15 is the DC. <laughs> as you, <laughs> as you, and you rip the second hand free, and he's, and he takes a few steps back away from away from the cage. As I'm assuming you're rushing it. Yeah, I'm gonna. Val is I'm, paying very close attention now. I am. Yeah, run, I am running very close. Full attention. rushing into the the cage. Ah! Is, question is: Is the cage made of steel or is it made of like it is, iron it's, or? It's made of bamboo. Uh, it's not bamboo. This is metal. It's all metal. Damn. Um, bamboo. It's not bamboo. You're not going to smash your way through this. <laughs> but um, but you rush and you gah, you hit you hit it hit it once um, and it, it shakes the the door the yeah, the bar shake. They can do I appear reach, to be made of iron of some kind. Can I can I reach through my hand through it? Am my um, arms too big enough? Are they... I would say you could barely get your arm through because you're so damn big. Uh, can um, I grab him? Uh, you reach out and he's out. He's out of reach. Okay. He's taking enough. He's he's not stupid enough to to get that close to you. However, you have your arm sitting out. Come and, here, furry bear. You know. Yeah. And uh, um, apparently he is. Uh, he you, you've scared the shit out of him because he goes to swing because you notice that his arms are long as shit, mm-hmm. and he's well without of reach of you, but you're not without a reach of him as he <laughs> swings this. Morning Star and just ah oh, shit smacks across the bars, clangs loudly, and as he does, he drops his weapon. It clangs to the floor next to the, next to your cell with because he rolled a natural one on his attack roll. Oh, oh shit! <laughs> and he kind of as it does, he's like, oh shit! And he goes to take a couple steps back, and he trips over the uh, the body of the hobgoblin woman and falls on his ass. Um, Can I? Can I pull the morning star through oh, the yeah. cell? You easily grab it and you you pull it inside. You have a weapon now. You can add a morning star to your equipment. Okay. Can I, you know, if this is out of initiative or whatever, it, first thing Rover is going to do is he's going to take that morning star and just start wailing on the, the lock. Or yeah, the... you start you start wailing on it. As that's happening, um, the door... Did he fall? When, yeah, when when the when the the bugbear fell. Now he is way over by the door, so far away from all the cells except for Rogar's. Um, when he fell, he slams the door closed behind him with his body as he kind of falls on his ass. And it's at this point that um, you guys begin to hear uh, a strange noise, and it's somewhat muffled by the slams of Rogar beating the hell out of the lock on this uh, on the cell door. Um, it sounds like a strange kind of tearing noise. Um, Zultkar, you got the natural 20 in your perception, right? Yeah. Zultkar, 
you're seeing all of this unfold, making note, getting ready, just in case. You don't know what's going to happen. The body of the woman that was just dropped in here begins to move, begins to convulse. Woman appears to be still unconscious. And then you notice, Zaltkar, that the body in the cell with Dayu, the two bodies in the cell with the um, with the the rebel leader and the body in the cell with Tuk Tuk are all doing the same thing. They're all Which moving. Which cell is Ryu in? Uh, Dayu. Dayu is right next to you. And I would, um, catching all of this, the commotion, I would get his attention, Daiju. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> hey, hey. No, what's going on in your cell? Mm. Turn around and I see that happening. All right, Daiyu. You look down and as this, and Rogar's the whole time he's just wailing on this on this uh on this gate. Go ahead and give me a uh another strength roll, Rogar. Nineteen. Yeah. It, now I will say, the gate's a lot more hardy than your manacles were, but you are you're making really good headway. <clears throat> oh, just and it's starting to bend and move at this point. But um, as that happens, you see as all the bodies in unison, you see all of their eyes open up, and all of the unconscious individuals in here begin mm-hmm. to scream loudly. Ah. <sighs> It's just and, and all at the same time, and as this happens, the uh, the the gu- the guard, the the bugbear kind of soldier, kind of sits up and he's like, <sighs> and Dayu, if you're you're looking at the at the the body next to you, as out of the shoulder area, because this one's kind of slumped to the side, you see the skin begins to bulge out. And then it rips open and a creature shoves its way out of this person. Um, At the same time, creatures rip their way through all of the other unconscious individuals in this room. Um, Die you. (laughs) This creature appears to be a... um, it, it's it's small. It's only about maybe a foot, foot and a half long. It looks kind of like a tadpole with a dark black kind of wet appearance. And it has what appears to be some kind of chitinous armored hide. There are several small tendrils along its back and down its tail, because it has a tail. It has two small arms with claws that it uses to quickly kind of scurry away from the hole it's just made. Its head is extended, oblong shape, and appears to have no eyes. Its mouth opens as it looks back at you, revealing rows of serrated, almost metal-like teeth. And you see another set of jaws deep inside of its mouth, and it hisses at you. (sighs) I need everyone to roll me initiative. Uh, Oh... Does hmm. alien music play when that happens really well? <laughs> I don't know, does it? <laughs> uh. Uh. Uh, Rogar rolled an 18. Rogar, all right. I got a, a 19. 19 for Tuk Tuk. All right. Dayu? 16. 16 for Dayu. And last but not least. Four. 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 Four for Zoltkar. All right. And that leaves this with a... Okay. Let me make sure I've got all this real quick before we start. Um, just kind of give me kind of opening reactions while I'm, while I'm, getting, this, uh, while I'm getting this up and running from all of you. Uh, how tall is the ceiling? Uh, the ceiling is um, 10 feet tall. 
not there was old. there was no insect like things uh, inside my cage, right? There was nothing inside your cage, no. Yeah. Okay. Nothing. Had both things in my cage, though, right? There's one yeah. in your cage, yes. So the whole time I've been trying to pick my lock, instead of, and I see it, I see yeah. it across the hall from me, and I look behind me, and I see it coming out behind me. I'm going to, um, I'm going to try to hide. Oh, you are. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens on your turn now. <laughs> what is, uh, uh, bonus, bonus action hide. Well, Zoltkar, what are you trying to do? Uh, Zoltkar is going to. Um, it's going to. Of course, we, we've we've got our shiv. I'm going to ready that uh, okay. shiv real hand like. Yeah. Uh, now that I see that that everything's about to shake down. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to be uh, as close to the door, but as far away from whatever slither and slimy I saw just come out of my <laughs> friend right. I choose. So, uh, dead friend there. All right, I'm all set up now. So we're going into initiative order at this point. All right. Um, first off, I need everyone to give me a sanity check <laughs> after Here seeing this happen. the sanity. So we just roll d20. Roll d20 and, and add your modifier, whatever your modifier Ooh. would be. Baseline 10, bro. So I have a plus six Rex. I have a sixteen. No, you have, you, have a, you have a you have a plus. plus three? It's a plus three. So they go up in increments three. of three. two. Yeah. yeah. I got an eleven. Okay. All right. Eleven for Tuk Tuk. How about Rogar? Uh, sorry, Roland. Now let's see. Uh, that would be nine. Nine. Mm-hmm. All right. Nine yeah. for Rogar. How about Dayu? Sixteen. Sixteen for Dayu and Zaltkar. Uh, straight up 10, man. 10? Okay. All yeah. of you hold your wits about you. Um, you apparently all are made of sterner stuff, though this is horrifying. And these creatures yeah. are beyond anything any of you have ever experienced. This is something very much um, abnormal. This does not happen in a uh, in the average, um, the average uh, day-to-day of the dynasty. So with that... Tuk Tuk, it is your turn. There is a creature inside of the cell with you. Is it kind of <sighs> looks up and hisses at you? It's only about a foot long, foot and a half maybe. Is there anywhere for me to hide? I, I have these skulker feet. I know so you I have can skulker hide. feet. Okay. I will say, <laughs> you can try. You can okay. always try to do anything. You're in a cage, bro. I mean, you're in a cage. You can hide. You can hide. You can hide try. Those. Try. Let's see what you hide can do. That. Hide under those bodies. Uh huh. Um, I guess the other option is I do an unarmed strike, right? I mean, or, or it's I up just to you. try to throw throw them out or something. That's what, that's up to you to do whatever you like to do. I'm not touching this thing. Use that pipe, bro. Anything. Use the pipe. Uh, Use your your crap. butt pipe. I'm going to. Uh, is it a flute? <laughs> That's a smoke. Nah, pipe. bro. The smoking it's pipe. A smoking it's, pipe. It's like a smoking okay. pipe. Yeah, okay. it's, it's one of those. Picturized... One of those really long ones, like like the Corella picture Bedil style. Gandalf style. Gandalf style. <laughs> Gandalf style. Gandalf style. Gandalf. Like, it's a Gandalf <laughs> pipe, is what it is. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, you're a small creature, bro. That's like it's amazing. That's, that's deep inside. <laughs> oh, it's deep. Yeah. It's deep. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and but this creature here that's a foot long or whatever is like a third of my size or a fourth of my size. It's true. It is. So it's kind of scary. So I don't want to break my pipe. <laughs> mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. I'm I'm going to try to like nestle up against the bars and try to like <laughs> camouflage and try to hide. Okay. Go ahead and make me head. a uh, stealth roll. That big ass goblin. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, it's stealth. Yes. Ooh, that's twenty-three. Twenty-three. First good roll I've had. All right. All right. You go to like perch up on top of the uh, on top of the the bars. You kind of eh, and you kind of climb up and you're you stop moving. Get my feet off. Of- <laughs> you get your feet off the ground and the thing looks up at you because you haven't actually hidden anywhere. You're just kind of in a cell hanging there. <laughs> <laughs> so, and hopefully I'm too high for him to reach. And I will say, you realize, Tuk Tuk, this thing doesn't have eyes. And it's looking oh. at you somehow, um, as far as you can tell. And it's... I'm going to be real still. You just get real still. 
and you're just hanging there. So that's going to be your turn to. to <laughs> so that'll bring us to uh, to Rogar. What would you like to do? Are any of these things in my cell? No, none of them are in your cell. But I'm cracking away at this. All right, give me another strength check. Okay. Sixteen. Sixteen. It's getting close. You think that next round, you've pretty much got this. You could probably push it next round. Um, as you, and it's, I mean, it's barely hanging on. The latch is barely hanging on at this point. And it's shaking. The is bug, the, yeah. I was about, okay. I was about to ask, is the bugbear still in there with us? Yeah, no, yeah, the bugbear's still in there with you and he's in mute horror. In fact, oh, I forgot to roll for him. Let's roll it real quick. Oh shit. That's insane. He um screams as this happens. He ah! and then he clutches at his chest. <laughs> and he goes unconscious next to the door, just falls unconscious. As I rolled the worst you could roll on the critical fail of the uh, madness table. And um you see the sanity leave his eyes as he, as he, as he uh, goes unconscious. Um, so and he's next to uh, Rogar's He's outside cage. of Rogar's cell. He's by the door, yes. And also by one of the things. So that will bring us to uh, Dayu. It is your turn. Yeah. There is one of these um, things in the cell with you. It's kind of similar to what Tuk Tuk did. I'm going to try and climb these bars. Okay, you kind of um, scale up, and I and I'll say you can easily do it. Um, you're not going to need it's if it's just holding on. I'm not going to yeah. make you make make some kind of check. You're a damn monk, for God's sake! So you can easily do this. You easily, kind of mm. prop yourself up, you're like wedge in the corner, holding on to the bars. Yeah. Would Would you like uh, to do anything else? Uh, no, because I'm scared to touch it. <laughs> okay. Um, that brings us to the creatures. And the creatures Damn symbiote. are going to all of them. <sighs> and you see the uh, the the uh, the other goblin, um, uh, Slit Craventon, is doing the same thing. Um, he's kind of mimicking. He's in the corner right next to Tuk Tuk. He's kind of scrambled up. Ah, ah, <laughs> oh God! Oh Gods! And he's. And he's kind of scrambled up as well. Um, all of these, all five of these creatures immediately, ah, and then they move away. And they immediately move to the unconscious bugbear uh, laying in the middle of the room. And let's see how uh, how bad this is. Got a feeling it's going to be real bad. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I don't get an opportunity attack. Uh, no, you're you're cowering up away from them. Do you remember just that? Just making sure. <laughs> yeah, just making sure. Yeah. Just making. <laughs> Would you like to drop down and make an opportunity attack? Uh, let me ask you. I, you know. Would you Would you like to strike one of these? The, the one that's in your cell. No. Okay. All right. Um, as they move in, let me see. This is going to be an insane amount of damage. Okay. They start tearing into this bugbear, and he's unconscious. He's, they start, ah, and they have their these. They open up their mouths, and a second set of like a little, a much smaller mouth just projectile <laughs> into his flesh, and just begins ripping pieces of this bugbear uh, apart, easily parting through his armor and his kind of natural kind of uh, thick and hide. And they start tearing into him. He's not dead yet, but he's getting flopped around. Um, that is the end of their turn. So that brings us to Zaltkar. It's your turn. Oh. <clears throat> All right. So I am relatively safe, yes, at the moment. Uh, none of them appear to be anywhere close to you. All right. They all have um, jumped onto the unconscious bugbear. Let me check this door if I can get this thing open now that my pal down at the far end has been jacking the iron up for okay. three or four rounds. All right. Um, I'm just going to give it a good... Uh, a good wiggle see if it'll come open and if not i'm just going to try and give it a shove okay so are you Terrible trying to strength. are you going to try to you're trying to force it you're not trying to use your shiv 
Um, I mean, if there's a way, if there's a, an appropriate uh, place where it looks like I could pick a lock, I would try to pick the lock. If you try to pick the lock, give me the, this give me the lock with the ship. This isn't official tools. It'll be a sleight of yeah. hand check. Now, yeah. if you fail this check by five or more, you're going to break your ship. Sure, sure. Okay, Skyrim. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, not too bad, though. Uh, 19. 19. With the sleight of hand, yeah. Okay. Slide of hand, 19. Mm. You stick your shiv in there. Oh, I do. You're sitting there working it, and then... I'm working it, baby. <laughs> your cell door opens. Sweet. All right. Does anybody notice my cell door open? I'm assuming everybody's in shock horror <laughs> watching what's unfolding. Right, in so the I, I still have movement then? You have movement if I reckon like. that would be my action, yeah. That would be your action, yes. Uh, yeah. So uh, let's see. Do you remember you are at one hit point? I just want to remind you. Yeah, I don't have. Gentlemen, um, help me out. Uh, I mean, I, I, I mean, I couldn't I do anything down. to risk. I got nothing. I got nothing to do to myself to help. Um, yeah, no, I needed to go the other way, not inflict wounds. I need to cure some wounds. Mm -hmm. Nope. I guess I am going to. Um, what is happening in the cell directly across from me? That is so Tuk Tuk. That cowering tuk -tuk. in the in the in the top corner right <laughs> next right, to him so... in, in the cell next to him is is the uh the the other goblin rebellion leader kind of they're all kind okay. of next to each other <laughs> so i'd make my way over to tuk tuk's door okay. also Quickly, waiting for my next round feet. to yeah waiting my next round to maybe jimmy that door open too all right that'll be the end of your turn then which will bring us now to Tuk Tuk. It is now your turn. Yes, it will. Uh, so he's walked over to me? Yeah, he's walked over to you and it looks mm -hmm. like he's going to try to help help get the door open. Can I can I reach for the shiv and try to pick the lock real quick? Um, if he's like, if, if he's holding the shiv out? If he lets you have it. I'm not. Look, uh, no, we're not that good friends yet, no. friend. No. No. Nope. Right, well, if, he's, if he doesn't really he'll let me, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take out the other ear ring yeah, two, and use both and try to pick it. Use both. Um, yeah, I will say. <laughs> okay, just give me a slide. Just give me a slide of hand check. Another one. Let's see what happens. I hope it breaks. Okay, 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 okay. That is a twenty-one. Okay. Yes. Yes, twenty-one. Somehow, you shove both of them in, and you're, huh, huh, and then it <laughs> opens, and your earrings are still good. <laughs> As you, as the door swings open. I am impressed. Uh, I look yeah. at him and I go. It's impressive. <laughs> it's impressive. It's impressive. Tuk Tuk's the name. What's yours? I'm proud for this. <laughs> Just, I'm introducing myself as I swing out. I'm holding on to the lock. He's the, still the holding on to the doors so and they kind of swing up. out. Yeah. I love it. He's just he's like head, he's like head level with you as he swings out. <laughs> yeah. I swing with it. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Mm. Should we get these others uh, out? I figure we ought to free as many of these folks and take them with us as we can. All right. Mm -hmm. I'll use my movement to just go to um not to the goblin that threatened me, but nope. whoever <laughs> else is across the way. You, you move past them and now we'll say if I you probably... move if you move pat if you move in any way further into the room, you're going to be relatively close within a few feet of or well, probably within ten feet of the creatures that are currently feasting on the unconscious goblin or bugbear. Yeah. yeah um, do do I have a because I'm on the um if I'm looking at the map you sent, I'm kind of in like the middle one on the south side, right? You were on the you no, you were on the far, you were the, the eastern bottom side. the bottom right corner. That was you. Okay, okay. So the closest person to me would be what Dayu? No, the closest person to you um, was actually the across the, the, way? the goblin. The one that directly across was um, was wow. uh, was Zoutkar, Who's out? Dayu's in the center. He's in the center on the on the northern wall. And then Rogar is the one closest to the door. Uh, at the, on the top. What's the goblin doing next to me? He's freaking the hell out and he's sticking his hand out. No! No! Don't don't leave me! He's reaching his hands through trying to trying to plead. Alright, I'll I'll go to him and try to unlock his. Okay. You move to his door. Now we'll take an action, so you just move right. to, to, to the door itself. Oh yes, yes! Oh, oh you'll 
you'll earn some points with the rebellion. I tell you, you just get me out of here. Get me out of here. Come on, come on. Um, that'll be the end of your turn. Tuk tuk. Yes. Um, that will bring us to Rogar. Um, no need to make a strength check. If you want to choose to open this door at this point, you can. Oh, I will do so. Okay, you easily kind of just kind of put your shoulder into it. The door almost falls off of its hinges at this point. Um, it's broken to the point it'll never shut again. Um, as it opens up, within within five feet of your door, um, so a, a ten feet, I guess, uh, if we're going by mechanically, right in front of the only exit that you can see out of this cell are five of these small creatures ripping into this bugbear. Is it five? Five of them, yes. Okay. Um, across from me mm -hmm. um, was Tuk Tuk and the other goblin, right? So yeah, so Tuk Tuk and um, Zaltkar are actually in the middle of the room now. Okay. Um, I would like to use my breath attack. Okay. On these, on these creatures. All right. Um, you, and for the first time, you see. I'm assuming it like kind of starts to glow in your mouth or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I basically like you'll see like. Um, just take a big inhale, Rogar, just go, and then like you'll start to see like, you know how you see cold and hot air kind of come out when you breathe in like a cold environment. You'll start to see the cold like kind of like to start to build up in his mouth, kind of coming up over his jaw, mm -hmm. and then he'll just, and just you know shoot out his cold breath. Um, okay. Woo! It's a con save. Con save. Yeah. Um, let me pull up there's con save real quick. It's not good. So That's what I was hoping. Uh, what's the DC? 13. 13. Uh, three fails, two passes. Okay. Um, I think it's just all, let me see. It's all um, cold damage? Yeah. Well, yeah. You still, on a fail, you take half. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So go ahead and roll the damage. All right. <laughs> Six damage. Six damage. Mm -hmm. Um. All right. Let me do some math here. Six cold damage. Um. Three failed. Assume it gets cold in this room. Nips get hard. Uh, probably a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then the rest of them will take come on let me think a tuck shrinks <laughs> <laughs> um here's what happens as you do so as you do so rogar you and you breathe and ice crystals begin to form and oh i forgot to roll for the bugbear oh yeah you killed the bugbear um what's okay. left of him he he kind of, ah, ah, he wakes up for a second as he <laughs> begins to freeze over. Um, the creatures all flinch away. <laughs> Not a, now, you see is they appear to not like what just happened to them. Okay. But you see the ice begin to kind of, what, what ice forms to them begins to slide off. And it appears that it's not doing as much damage as it should. Ah, damn it. As uh, and as all five of them kind of <sighs> look over towards you. Can I... Um, <laughs> uh, well, can, my bonus action oh, then. Uh, well, it, did you... But you, your, your breath is a action unless you're raging. Yeah, yeah. Um, so with my bonus action, mm -hmm. I would like to rage. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, you know, I've got their attention. I got to make sure... I, you ah, and you you rage out. Um, oh, do you like do you scream out when you rage, or how does this work? I'm kind of yeah. curious. Yeah, most likely, you know, maybe the 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 blue in my eyes starts to shimmer a little bit more, you know, yes. and uh, um, just um, come fight the son of Amu, and um, yeah, I'm just re raged. Yeah. Son of Amu, you rage, you're gonna uh, you flex. 
Um, it is now the creature's turns. Um, they just took damage from you. Let me see here. Yep. Yep. And... Yep. So here's what happens, Amu. You watch as all five of them <laughs> and they're kind of up on their kind of little tiny arms perched on top of this corpse. They hiss at you, all of them in unison. <sighs> and then they turn around and bolt into the door. And as they do, they <laughs> smash their way underneath it. And they're gone from sight. And we are out of combat now. And that would be a... Uh, oof. We're out of combat. So that is that. Um, feel free to act as you choose now. Oh, guys. So, so I would... Just, um... It's going <laughs> to burst open the next door. Okay, you're just going to immediately charge at the next door? Yeah. Okay, I will say because you're so enraged, um, you probably don't try the door. Um, yeah. And it does open inwards. So, uh, <laughs> so go ahead and give me a strength check. I guess an advantage. Okay. Yeah, you're raging. Yeah. Uh, 17. 17. Um, you hit it. Boom. And this is, it's a heavy door. It's a real heavy door. And it bends. It begins to, it doesn't completely give way. But it's looking like it's about to burst going the wrong way now. Okay. I'll let, I'll let other people do things, but that, okay. that was my first action, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, uh, is, uh, is, da is Daigu still in his cage? Daigu is still in his cell, yes. Okay, so I would take my shiv and try to shimmy open his cell door. Okay. Go ahead and give me a uh, another slide of hand check. Slide of hand Oh, that one isn't as good. That was only a seven. I'm stuck in here. <laughs> so, car, you take your shiv and you enter it in and you... You... Pink! Yeah. Damn it. Oh, shit. Well, that's not good. <laughs> it broke? Uh, it, broke. it broke. In the I'm lock. Sorry. In the lock. In the lock. Do I happen to look around and see a morning star laying on the ground? Uh, I'm assuming Rogar still has it. <laughs> so, so, yes. Rogar's sitting there like, hitting the door. It looks like it's about to burst off its hinges. So, uh, I'm going to look over. Where's my friend uh, Where's my friend Tuk Tuk? Where are you, Tuk Tuk? I'm across the way at the cell. I see this happen, and I look over at the big man and say, Big man! How about the man with that lock? And at the same time, I'm trying to pick the lock of this little goblin cell okay. that was being a shithead to me, but I'm still going to try to pick it. Go I ahead, don't know me, why. Give me a slide of hand check. Well, that's not very good. That's uh, uh, 11. An 11. You Better start to... <laughs> so are you using your earring still? Yeah. Yeah, you're... Damn it! And it's, it's not going. And he's like, come on, faster! For God's sakes! Help me. And, um, yeah, that happens. That transpires. I did yell at the big man to help. Okay. To Rogar? Help, to help, uh, to help die you. Rogar, are you, are you, are you listening in your rage or are you just smashing this door again? Smashing the door. Okay. <laughs> I will say there's no need to make a check again because the door's so broken at this point. The I don't next, know these people. The next one. Call me you, a lizard. You, you, no. uh, and then you, rawr, and the door smashes the wrong way, snaps off of its what hinges were left, and then slides out into the hallway. And you kind of spill out into the hall, rawr, and then you kind of stand up. Um, you're out in the hall now. Okay. Um, do I see what's on the map here? You see, so there is a torch illuminating next to you. Mm -hmm. But the torch at, at the midpoint in the main hall here is out. There is no light. Okay. You do see is light it... spilling around the corner from what you assume is a torch around the corner. Okay. Um, why do I have any indication of what these creatures were 
like demonic or um I will say because of your background and where you're from um go ahead and make me an arcana check all right that's not gonna be good I'm sure it's not gonna be good but <laughs> it's, it's, no. there's always a chance <laughs> it's a two two you don't know what the fuck this is. You just <laughs> you just yeah. know it's a monster. Okay. Okay. Um Yeah. Uh You're kind of standing there and you're still kinda of, uh, uh, Yeah, um I mean he's he's moving down probably. He's moving okay. down, he's getting out, you know. As you're you're move as you're begin moving down the hall by yourself, yeah. you will um see what's happening in the cell block still. What's going on, guys? Dayu is stuck in a cell. Dayu is stuck in his cell. Um, and that uh, pick is stuck in the lock, right? It's broke, broken in the lock, yes. Is there any way yes. to get the attention of the raging dragonborn? You could you could try. You want to go out into the hallway? Uh, no, no. I will do it. Yeah. You, I'll, you, I'll, you, I'll you run. Always, I'll run. You're always trying to convince me, you know. I'm going to stay with Daigu. I will yeah. run after him. You run, so Tuck Tuck, you go to leave, and the small goblin hands of <laughs> of Craven Tongue grasp at your loincloth. No, no, don't leave I'm me. Out. I'm naked. Oh yeah, that's right, you're naked. So he's grasping at your <laughs> at your little your smooth skin. He, he's trying to yeah. grab a hold of your buttocks. He's sliding off of you. I'll be back. The description made it clear that there was nothing small about what we saw. That's right. So, so I'll run small him. buttocks at least? Jesus. That's, that's fair. I say, gentlemen, dragonborn, please help us. You run and I try to come up and, and, and tug on his arm. Well, I'll say, please. You, you got in the hallway, and he's, he's down huge. the hall already. And he's, uh, he's big well, as I shit. yell at him. You kind of yell down at him. Um, and I'm I very respectful. You, oh, you're respectful in your yell. I see. <laughs> oh, okay. say, Sir Dragonborn. He, he mentioned Dragon the lizard Bond. folk thing, so I'm saying, please, Sir yes. Dragonborn, help us. Um, you would see, um, Tuk Tuk, because you're not uh, in a blind rage right now, that um, it looks like there was a bit of a scuffle in this hallway recently. You're not sure how recently, but um, there's blood. Looks fresh. Um, at different spots down the hall as you're looking down. And this is a, a pretty long hallway. Um, you're looking at about from where you're standing right outside the cell block. Uh, you're looking at almost uh, about 90 feet all the way to the uh, to the door to the barracks. And you can see there's blood spilled along the ways. Um, it looks like the door to um, what you see on the map is room C. Looks like there are scrapes and claw marks on the door itself. Um, kind of strange. And you notice that the barracks door is closed and it looks like there is shit piled up on the inside. And you can see just like pieces of something that looks like the door is barricaded. But have I used all my actions for the turn? I will say that yes, you scream at him. It's Rogar's choice if he wants to hear you or not. Okay. Is he? I mean, is he trying to convince me, or like, I don't, should I, don't I roll know. for this? Or that's up to you. What What would you like to do, Rogar? I mean, if he's trying to like persuade me, then I'll I'll roll. But if he's okay. if he's just if he's just yelling at me, I'm you know, I'm trying to be respectful because I, I feel like I got the feeling that obviously you're angry, but also you felt disrespected being called a lizard. Uh, I mean. I didn't well, say that out loud, but you know. Yes, uh, but, oh, okay. you know. Uh, I, I, w I will say, you know, Rogar, you're not used to civilization. You probably uh -huh. don't give two shits about nope. someone being polite to you. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. My my initial inclination is I'm raging unless he's like he's in front of my face and like like saying stop, you know, or something you're like yeah, trying to stop me. I, I don't hear. I'm out for blood right now. Out know? for blood. All right. And you still have that morning star in your hand. They um, wronged us. You so you're in a blind rage going down this hallway. I'll say that you get all the way down to the end of the hallway, and um, what you see is 
you see, you can you can tell just from a quick glance that the barracks store is is barricaded, and you do hear movement and voices on the other side. Um, you also see the door to the armory. It is closed, firmly. Um, not having known what it was like on the way in here, you do see that there appears to be some kind of um, some kind of like tablet, some kind of uh, raised stone next to the door, and there is a it looks like some kind of room etched onto it. Uh, above the room, there is a what looks like a stone um, helm and like a piece of armor and like um, looks like almost like a the upper half of a uh, of a suit of armor made out of stone and is sitting above the uh, in in like almost like part of the wall uh, above the the raised little square portion with the rune on it Uh, Rogar, I mean, he's in a rage, so he's trying to get through probably the barracks door, as it's the first door I guess he would see. Um, okay. But you start you start pounding on the barracks door. Is it opened? Like, I, if I could push it forward, just like I'll it looks, it, it looks barricaded. It looks barricaded. Um, you start you start pounding on it, and you hear inside, oh, not another one. Get ready! Get ready, boys! Um, um, <laughs> I'll just yell out. Um, Come fight Rogar! And then just crash it against the uh, okay. the door. <laughs> um, if, it, if it's, you know, I'll do that. For a little bit if it doesn't give way i'll probably move on to another door it start it's it starts to crack and move and then you hear screams on the inside of the door you hear no oh, no and then you hear oh oh god ah! and then you hear start hearing screaming inside and after like a minute or so when you're starting to make headway there's no screams on the inside of the door anymore you're smashing in um, let's flip away from you for a moment and let's see how uh, let's say, see how Zoltar is doing with Dayu. Let's see if he's going to get him out of this cell or if he's just going to live in here. This might be his new home. <clears throat> right, so friend, what what is your name, friend? It's Dayu. Dayu, I, I'm doing my best to get you out of here. Is there anything in your cell that we can, we can jimmy this lock with? Uh, is there anything on that hobgob or goblin body? I, Dayu, it's really funny. You know, you <laughs> you look over at the frozen guard. You know, he's a he's a guard, mm-hmm. um, and there there's just a set of keys laying next to what off of know? his belt that <laughs> no one just all you have to do is look down and they would have mm-hmm. seen him. Um, they're right there. This could have all been avoided, but <laughs> you see him. You you're like, hey, there's the key. Ah, shit. Well, give me the key. Oh, and you know, now okay. um, I'm going to have to, I guess, try and get my broken yeah. shit yeah, out, of the shit out of there now. Zalt, Zalt Car, you move down and you, you, you're you like, uh, you, you feel a little embarrassed. I mean, you should know better. You, you get down, yeah. you, you grab the key and um, you move over to the door. Uh, the piece of shit is broken in it. So I will allow you to make me a sleight of hand at advantage. Because you have to try a key fix to it. try to to try to jimmy this door open now. All right. With advantage, oh, nice slide of hand comes to a fourteen. Fourteen. Eh. You with the key, it <laughs> opens oh. barely. <laughs> what, about, what about Tuk Tuk's friend behind us? Tuk Tuk is like, ah, don't leave me! Come on, come on, come on! I'll take care of you. I will. I don't. I don't give a shit if you're, if you're a fucking hob. Just get over here. This. That's what the. That's what the the goblin leader says. Yes, that's what he says. Oh jeez, oh jeez. He's de- and, he's uh, desperate. He's about ready to get on his knees and do whatever you tell him to. 
get on your knees and tell me you love me. No, um, yeah, go ahead and uh, I'll uh, I'll open the door for him too. You mean you walk over to a cell and you you click the the key ring? And I just swing it open and get the fuck out of his way. Swing it open to the any. Ah, he's a, ah, yeah. every goblin for himself. Yeah, I figured that much. He's going down, he's running down the hallway. It's called um, fodder, y'all. <laughs> Yeah. You don't have to be fast. You don't have to be fastest. You just have to be faster than the last guy. And um, as everybody's finally free, um, Rogar, your your rage ends as you are pounding on this door, and you <sighs> you've almost got it open, but you you've run out of time. Um, everybody can begin to gather together, if you'd like, in the main hall. I mean, Rogar would be catching his breath. If they're coming towards him, that's fine. Yeah. But, you know. Mm -hmm. Can I ask, what did I hear? Did I hear those guys? Because I was you, going after Rogar. Did I hear those guys? Yeah. There being like, now, <clears throat> you would have you would have made it up to Rogar at some point. Okay. And, yeah, you easily would have heard everything happening on the inside. It was loud. So I just kind of put my hand on, like, Rogar's elbow, reach up, and just try to, like, gently kind of, like, Let's go over here, friend. You know, I'm trying to pull away from that door where there's obviously some, you know, the craziness behind it. Okay. Kind of. And he looks calmer now, room. right? So, I mean, does he? I mean, he's he looks a little <clears throat> bit more tired. Like he's just kind of, he's catching his breath. I mean, he's still angry, but he's yeah, he's definitely calmer than he was a few mm -hmm. seconds ago. Friend, what is your name? And very broken goblin, he would say, Rogar, Sonobamu. Rogar, my name is Tuk Tuk, the taker. Why don't we move down here? And, and I try to move down to the, the next, I try to pull him away gently. Uh, you don't have to do this alone. And I try to go down to like where the armory is, maybe. And you're right next to it. You're right next to yeah. it. Yeah. What does that door look like? Um, what I described previously, it is a, a large door. There is an opening slit at the top with, with bars along it to allow you to look inside. Um, there is that. I can't see inside of it. No, you wouldn't <laughs> be able to see inside of it. The, and pretty much everybody else in the party could. There's a small square, like. Um, raised section sticking out of the wall with that rune etched on it at about um, about head level for you. Uh, and there is that kind of half piece of um, what looks like um, stone armor kind of resting above it with its kind of arms crossed like this. With a, it looks like a like a stone sword, and, well two stone swords in each hand. One in each hand. <laughs> Rogar, what do you see inside? Um, if Rogar doesn't hear anything in the barracks, um, I guess he will... Okay, it's gone quiet. He'll move along to the armory. All right, go um, ahead and give me an investigation check, Rogar. Oh, boy. Oh, yes. I love this. I love the barbarian is doing all these checks. It's fantastic. <laughs> Fourteen. Oh, that's that's actually right, that's not right. bad. That's not bad. That's really kinda, good for me. I got minus one. Yeah, you look in and you're kind of <laughs> you're kind of like, mm, yeah. you see um, arms and armor. Um, if you do the the thing you latch onto, Rogar, is you see your equipment in this armory okay. through this door. Um, you would also see everyone else's equipment too. Not that you know that. But um, this is a collection of all of the shit they've taken off of everyone. Do the bars look big enough that I can stuff this goblin in there? No, they do not. No. Okay. And it's like it's like a window. <laughs> it's like a like like a head sized window. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do the bars look bendable? Even if you could bend them, you. Know, I mean, you can always try. You could try. You want to try? Even if I bent them, I couldn't fit him in there. That's my question, really. No, you wouldn't. It, it wouldn't be yeah, big enough. Right. Now, would yeah. Rogar try? Maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if he'd try if he didn't think he could fit him in there. Yeah. 
If we if we if we looked at it, I mean, in, like I can't, I can't. Maybe fit him in there. maybe if you broke a piece of pieces of them off, you could fit them in there. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you know, just pick them up. You know, you know, squeeze them a little yep. bit. You know, yep, make yep. a little bit more you flexible. You can make them fit then. Oh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, Rogar, I don't know. He would. Uh, Does he respond to my question? Um, he would say, "My things are in there. Get them for me, little one, and um, pick him up and like show him. I'll lift him up and show him the bars. Mm-hmm. Like right. I'll pick him up and like put him on." So you, you can see inside Tuk Tuk, and you would see that yes, your equipment's in there along with everyone else's. All right. I will try to pick the lock. Okay, what do you have to pick the lock with? My earrings. Okay. Currently. Um, first thing, I know they got the keys behind me, but I don't know that. Well, immediately you look down, there's no there's no hole. There's no oh. locking mechanism. There is a handle, and then there is that, that square room next to where the handle is. Does it make any sense to me? Um, give me an investigation check. All right, that's a 13 plus. You said investigation? Yes. Yes, it's a 13. Okay. Um, I had a choice. You did have a choice. I chose Um, intimidation over investigation. Yes, you did. And this is what happens. (laughs) So, so Tuck Tuck, you kind of look at it. I don't know, some kind of weird lock, I guess. You've never fiddled with something like that, but it can't be that hard. Maybe you could mess with it. Um, it appears to be, this is definitely the lock, though, whatever this is. Okay. You could probably judge from the rune in the center of it, giving your background, that it is magical in nature, somehow. Now, does that mean you can't open it with physical means? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. You can always try. I will try. Okay. Until other people catch up with us. All right. I will say at this point, the rest of you are beginning to pull out of the cell blocks and you're able to move down the hall and you see Tuk Tuk and Rogar standing next to him as Tuk Tuk begins to fiddle with the uh, with the locking mechanism on the armory. Go ahead and give me a... Um, uh, do you, you don't have a lock pick though, right? No, I still have my earrings. I have lock give picks, me, give me, give me that Give me that sleight of hand then. By the way, you know, I'm... Oh, that's fantastic. I rolled a natural 19. Yes. Plus, plus four, so 23. 23. By the way, I'm I'm three foot nine. He's seven foot five. So we're yes. standing next to each other. I just want to point that out. Yes, exactly. And we're both butt naked. Neither one of us have Yes, you are. On, it's it's that, funny. that meaty, and I will say, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen the member of a dragonborn, but it might be frightening. Um, and this one in particular, <laughs> it's as big as Tuk Tuk. <laughs> this one in particular is both large and it has scars on it. It's it's kind of <laughs> Jesus. I mean, it's like it's seen battle before. <laughs> so so you know, it's it might the be same a little token, intimidating though. On the same token though, mine yeah is yeah. also large. It's true. Comparatively, yeah. And- yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's it's true. See, Regardless, true. though, as you're, you know, you know, we have Dick you Sweeney in here. Mm. You, it's you, not you a start, competition. <laughs> you start <laughs> fiddling. You, you start fiddling with the with the kind of mechanism, and you start kind of touching it. You're trying to figure out how the hell to open it. And as you touch it, um, <laughs> as you touch it, uh, you don't notice this because you're fiddling with the lock. Um, Rogar, what's your passive perception? Uh, passive perception. Ten. Ten. Rogar, you don't see this either, because you're kind of watching patiently. Um, the stone suit of armor above the lock, the arms immediately (laughs) rip free from the wall, and two large swords sweep down. And does a 18 hit (laughs) tuk-tuk. Uh, it hits me, yeah. It's you. Okay, that is going to be... Wait. What? Yeah, yeah. no, I'm, I'm level one. Never mind. I don't think I have uncanny dodge or anything. No, you don't. That Reaction. is... No. Uh, I rolled really bad. 
So that is only yes. going to be eight points of oh, slashing God. damage. Oh, <laughs> God! I only have ten hit points, so you know. <laughs> Jesus. As the, the swords sweep out, they <laughs> sweep into you, and you <laughs> and you kind of fall back into the into the hall. And, and I feel like... Die. No, you don't immediately die. Um, but you are nearly, nearly. Yeah, oh yeah, nearly. Yeah, nearly die. You kind of fall backwards, bleeding from the chest. Um, the the suit of armor then looks over at Rogar. Had the it's only half. It's like stuck in the wall. And Rogar, it is going to make an attack against you because you're within its reach. Um, however, a ten does not hit you. I'm sure. Right, Rogar? It is not. I have 14. Yeah, so he sweeps out and you kind of duck underneath it as it slams into the wall and you're able to kind of distance yourself away from it. Um, even putting distance away from it, you notice that it cannot swipe at you unless you're okay. right next to the door. Um, <laughs> is, everyone, is everyone gathered at this point? I would assume I at this point everyone's begun to gather behind you. This tuk tuk's kind of like, ah, ah, and then you see, you you hear a uh, a a a small kind of goblin patter up behind tuk tuk. <laughs> see, you get what you deserve, you little shit. Whoa! And he <laughs> and he begins to kind of walk away from you. He begins to walk down the hall, going south. Can I grab him by the back of his neck? The the little goblin? Yeah, before he leaves my reach. Sure. Go ahead and give me, an, a, give me an attack roll. Okay. An arm strike? Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, 14. Um, you go to reach out, and he ducks underneath as you... Damn it. Big hand slides underneath. He goes, ha! Ah, watch it, lizard! Hmm. <laughs> I'll and fuck you up. <laughs> he kind of points his finger up at you. <laughs> Can I try to trip him as he walks past me? He's already past you at this uh, point. Rogar tried no. to snatch him up, <laughs> and he starts. He starts like backing. This guy, he starts know. walking. He starts backing away from you. <laughs> you start hearing the song. You know, I'm gonna tell you a story about a hurricane. You know, he's just walking down. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, nah, I'm getting the hell out of here. I don't care what the fuck you guys are doing. You're with this jackass right here. Left me to die in that cell with, that, with all those fucking monsters. And he, he walks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At this point, you're able to kind of get up. And he starts making his way down to the exit, which is the way that um, Zakar got dragged into here. Um, and he gets to it. And he's like, ah, can't, can't, I, can't I get a break? And you see that there is a similar locking mechanism next to this, to these this bar. And these are just bars. It's just bars, but there is a door in it. And there are runes laced around the main door. You would assume that they are magical in nature. Um, and he just kind of smacks his head against it a couple of times. Um, what are you guys doing? <laughs> Rogar. <laughs> Our belongings are in there. And I'll point towards the armory. Mm -hmm. Can one of you access this door? I cannot. I, mean, I rolled a 23, so I don't know how I'm going to access anything. <laughs> Do I oh. notice the keys on their person? Oh, no. No. Okay. Um, do I have a chance to do something real quick? Sure. Um, I'd like to uh, lay on hands for five HP. There we go. Myself. I was waiting Myself. for it. I was waiting for it. You know, <laughs> and, I wasn't uh, going to tell you that, but you me, know, uh, I was hoping you would, yeah. you would do that because you kind of lay on hands and you. Yeah, that's that's what I do. It's a thing I do. You, it's lay on hands. You, so uh, I feel better now. I feel halfway better. You feel you feel you feel a little bit more rejuvenated. If this were three point five, I would be just bloodied now. It's you wouldn't dead yeah <laughs> um, um but uh, I, if i have the keys and we're struggling to open these doors where all of our shit is yeah i'm gonna help open the door um zolt, zolt car yeah, um zolt car 
Zoltkar, go ahead and give me a Arcana check at advantage because Arcana of your background. Uh, let's see here. At the advantage, click the roll button. Oh, fucking sick. It's a 19. Okay. Zoltkar, um, you look down at the lock. Um, due to the nature of your patron, your patron deity, the Jailer of Secrets, you have intricate knowledge of different ways of keeping something um, spirited away, to say the least. This you lock would know for physical keys. Exactly. This can only be opened with magic, which means there is some kind of magical, and what you're assuming, some kind of either there's a magical person walking around here, which shouldn't, which should should be rare, or there is some kind of magical key of some sort that will open this lock. I can only sense the divine. I cannot sense magic itself. This, these keys will not open this door. No, they will not. So I share that with my friend Ro Rogar. Okay. Sure. And what will? This is arcane. This is an arcane lock. And uh, I don't have the skills to suss which, which ma uh, mage might open this door, but these keys aren't going to do it. Mage, is that a thing? Will a mage open this door? It's a person, usually. Someone who has specific knowledge of certain secrets. Then let us find this mage. And Rogar is gonna, yeah, he's gonna. He's on a rage mage quest. <laughs> he's going rage to, mage. Uh, rage mage. There were people the in here. The wizard. I will point at the barracks store. Mm -hmm. They go silent now. Um, perhaps your mage is in there. So, uh, GM, you said earlier that this door to the barracks appeared barricaded. It was barricaded. Now, I will say, Rogar was pounding on it for quite some mm. time. Yeah. It can just about be opened. Um, Let's can, open this door. Yeah. I'll say, with all of you being present, you know, you can easily open the door. And here's what's going to happen. As Rogar pushes the door... Um, leading the way, the door, and there's a bunch of shit behind it that just begins to fall into the room. Looks like they piled up the bunks, the beds, they were pushed against the door itself, blocking it, and a bunch of them fall out. And as the door smashes open, um, you see there's blood spattered everywhere. Fresh blood, some, and what's more than concerning is a lot of it is dripping from the ceiling. And there is a hole about three to four feet in diameter in the center of the ceiling. And there is blood dripping out of it onto the floor. And that's a good time to take our first break. Ah, uh, the break. Ozzy. Uh,